Oh, hello. Hi, Gene. Hi. Hi there. Hello. All right. I just come to my MIT. Uh, I wanted to share, um, so Lakesh last time said that, um, I'll turn a little bit to myself, uh, Lakesh last time said that there is a two members of the site who have visited the colony and came back, or I've been visiting the colony all the time. And so far we haven't heard from the side uh, from the colonies at all directly uh, anything that comes comes through Jim a little bit comes from the Karaya but but we didn't hear from uh, from people who have visited and Lakesh said that the problem is that you know they know so much and they allow to talk about their visit but they don't aren't allowed to talk about what they learned there so they are hesitant to come public uh, and I just wanted to share the technical possibilities how you can let us know without exposing your identity. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be, you know, you might you might not be ready you like to expose your identity, your families, your jobs, and so on. So how to stay anonymous and let us know. Obviously, whatever you do through the computer is can be traced. So the secret government can trace you and confirm their suspicions. So how to do that anonymously? Mm, a simple way would be when you travel, you can come to any uh, library, and if you don't have to identify yourself, you just type a message on a computer, and you can send it. You can post a. Uh, you can uh, on, on our website. Is there is an application form. You can post anonymously anything there. And if you do it from a public computer, there is, you know, it would be really, really, really difficult to trace, especially if you run away fast and they don't notice you, you know, wear dark glasses. <laughs> 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 so from public computer, you can leave anonymous message without uh, registering on, on the site. That would be the easiest possible way to contact us, uh, especially when you travel. Uh, I, of course, I, I, guess, I guess if you are from some strange place, where there is no other from the place where there is no other members and say you are from I don't know Novosibirsk and you know if you do it from Novosibirsk library then they can trace you back because they know everybody who is on the side all 200 people or so but if you travel you know to New York City then uh, we have people from there or Canada so then they cannot trace you and another thing is a postcard as, as somebody said uh, you know you can just print it out uh, you know, use gloves, don't lick the envelope, but, you know, print out your message. Hey, I have been to the colony, Max, and uh, uh, it's easy to find my address. Um, actually, do I have an address? I don't, uh, yeah, Jim, Jim has address on the side, I think. I do? I don't know if you have addresses. <laughs> All right. You have a Skype, you have a Skype Yes, I yeah, no, no, I mean the, the postal street address. I guess I will post the street address on, on the contacts. But you know you can easily easily find it. You know, Max Steinberg street address is very easy, and Jim Jim Charles Reiki is also is yeah. we are online, but we're not on the site. So I'm at uh, Jim Reiki at gmail dot com. Yeah, but I'm talking about street address oh, and the street, street address. No. One two nine Cobb Terrace, C O B B Terrace, uh, Rochester, New York one four six two zero. So please, w people who have visited the uh, visited the colonies. Share what you can share. Uh, we really need that validation that would greatly inspire us and especially our uh, viewers and uh, members of the site. And uh, yeah, find jobs and donate to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim is uh, now occupied pretty well, not fully, but you know what, 40%, 50%? Well, I have, uh, I had four channelings this week. Oh, wow. And I have actually two of them are today. So you just channeled this morning before that. Mm -hmm. you? you channeled at eight a.m. in the morning. Oh no, not yet. I we changed the time. I have a four o'clock and an eight o'clock, and right. they're both out of the country. So Jim, some days Jim spends more time out of his body than in his body. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm starting to think like an alien. So. So, so Jim is available for private sessions. You can reserve them uh, through Skype, email, uh, and even telephone, and pay through the site. And uh, 
donations are welcome. Zakaria is also uh, uh, has a page on our site, so you can donate to Zakaria as well. Uh, I guess uh, that, that is all for. Uh, are you ready to do other channeling, or you're done for now? I don't know if anybody else is around, but yeah. we could give it a shot if you want. Let's do a little discussion, and then we let let Jim kind of you know get a bit more of uh, rest, and then we'll try another another channel. And if if anybody comes through, I'm, I'm sending you some Reiki from Bulgaria. Thank you. I just became a Reiki. Oh, wow. <laughs> I I just became a Reiki master this week. Good. I'm first level, mm -hmm. but a master is very interesting. It's amazing feeling. I've heard. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. I just got it this week. Good, so, bravo. thank you. I feel different. Yes, it is great. So, um, do you have anything to discuss? Any discussions? Um, nope. I'm, I'm good. I want to discuss drugs and suicide. Oh my. Um, anybody wants? That's a negative subject. Oh, well, oh, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm fluent on the subject. No. Oh, Any, very. Good. Anybody wants to speak about that? Yeah. <laughs> I have. At right. one point. Lots. Uh -huh. I have. A, well, you know what's funny? I am. Um, my Nana, she was dead. Like, she. <laughs> Wow, well, sorry. She she died in September, and um, I went through this period of time where I just wanted to actually like, like that's I don't think that's good, but I had those feelings for a really long time, and then I had a dream, and she was in the dream, and she asked me if I wanted to die, and it seemed like a test, but I was like, no thanks, and because something was telling me no, I was like, my job's not done here yet, and. Right. I swear to God, it, it was her. It, I don't know if she was testing me or if she was legit about it, but it was one of the craziest things ever. I mean, it changed my life. I don't I don't want to die anymore. And um, it was a huge lesson for me. Well, so, that's great. You know, maybe she wanted you to realize that you wanted to stay. She needed you to realize it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a, that's very that's a true dream. That's yeah, I think it was her too. I do too. I think yeah. it was her. I, I that resonates with me that it's her. Yeah. That and she was saying to you, "Do you really want to die? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you don't." It, like, it, it opened up that part of me that was like, "No, you're not. You're not doing that." No. I think Mike has a similar experience, don't you, Mike? Yeah. I was uh, pretty much pronounced dead when I took heroin about 12 years ago. My, my, my breathing had gotten so shallow that there was no life in me and I was turning gray. Mm -hmm. And I was brought back and, uh, and then a year after that I got into a car accident and was pronounced dead in the ambulance and came back. So wow. You're meant to many be more, here. Many more things to do. <laughs> Yeah. My, my psychic side is starting yeah. to open up. Yeah, he's in a counselor for drug rehab, yeah. My psychic yeah. side is starting to open up. Is a it? Lot. Oh, that's good. I don't know why. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else here? No. I just, um, I, I saw that Mike guy, when he was talking earlier, I kept thinking, he, you should get into being a counselor um, after you're done and work for the dr drug rehab. Um, you would be great at it. I can just see you would just flourish there. So once you get done with all your stuff, that's the best thing. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I could see you being a counselor. There's, they need them a lot. People at, actually there that, you know, helps them and stuff. You could do that. That would be best. The people always come to me and stuff. And yeah. I, I'm very comfortable talking about that and, and uh, and, uh, them. Yeah, but once you get through all that stuff and you get there and do that, you'll you'll just go. You'll just go. You'll know exactly. Well, you're so. you're in a trustful place with a lot of people because you've been there and been through it, and so you know what they've been through. So you're not just saying, "I know how you feel." You actually know how they feel. You're not just right. saying it. <laughs> so um, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. So I see you as a I see you as a, a light worker and a counselor as well. I see you as a light worker though as well. There's there's a lot of light in you that is wanting to come out. So yeah. 
I see that. So how do you approach that problem? Um, you know, just to, I guess you want to, to get a job. The, it would be nice to have it fully officially endorsed. Uh, I, I make money. Mm -hmm. I make money. Good. <laughs> but I don't know. You want you want that activity to be fully officially endorsed, uh, and there is no limit how far you can go. Like we on uh, blogging is great. Um, we my family is reading a blog of one of those people who who is doing. That that counselor work and he became a ma major major of the city. I'm like, yes, I think. Yeah, that's you know, I just the word a major. He became right. a major of the city because he transformed the city. Mm -hmm. So there is no limit how far you can go with that. He became really popular because you know drugs in some cities are you know the main the main problem, yeah. and you can really go very far with that. But I see you're coming out of it though. Your enthusiasm to get over it is really helping you get over it. And plus... Yeah, that'll be my lifeline. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, um, you know, are you on Skype or anything? Um, not often, but I, I do have an account. Uh, you can, if you need me, write to me on Skype. So, I, Jay, I, will. I will, Jim. You, do you have my Skype address? Um, I think it was on the human college. Yes, show. it's on the page. Yes, uh, I have people. I have a lot of people just writing to me on Skype now, and um, I will answer their questions. N not a, Lakesh is not answering them. I'm answering them, but um, he helps me with some of them. But can you, uh, ask, can you ask Lakesh if, if you received the song I gave him? Maybe maybe next week you can see. What was I it called? Hold on a second. Glide. What's it called? Glide. Oh, that would be right up his alley. That's why I sent it. Yeah. I'll find out for you. He's not around right now. All right, so if anyone feels suicidal, write to us. Uh, not necessarily only to us, but, you know, the colony, just post it on the colony, and um, and at least we'll send you love. And, um, and well, this win this winter has been absolutely atrociously depressing. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh -huh. Yes, it has. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. The worst. <laughs> yes. Uh, the lady in Bulgaria would not know that. Your winter's probably been mild this year, hasn't it? Oh, Eddie, she's not she, there. She stepped out. Eddie, okay. She, I think they're having a mild winter in in Europe and a really harsh winter here so but you know depression is not because of the weather it's because of well light deficiency yes some sort of energy energy patterns yes and reptilian sent an energy I was told you guys yes um, actually the rep there was a bad re reptilian attack not long ago and people were still suffering from it in some ways because they, it's over and it's the energy's gone. But they were left in a bad way, state with uh, much turmoil and um, anger and stuff like that. Because that's what it worked on. It worked on lower vibrational uh, emissions. So a lot of people felt a lot of lower vibrations at that time. And could not pull out of it because it actually hit the higher vibrational people harder in some ways. They were able to pull out of it easier too, but those that it hit really hard that knocked them down, it took them a while to get back up and some of them still aren't back up again. So. I have a friend that works in retail and she said she didn't know what was going on, but the last three weeks people have been so mean. Right. And yes. that's probably what it was. <laughs> last few days people yeah. were mean. That's, yeah. That's well, she goes that's unusually. Of the yeah. Attack. yeah, it's dwelt on lower vibrational energy. I'll have to tell her that. <laughs> and it lasted ten days, but oh it, the gosh. effects of it go much greater than that. So I mean it lasted the actual attack was two hours and 17 minutes. It lasted 10 days for the energy dispelling of it. That's a lot of energy. And it still is not fully recovered because people dropped vibrations. Yeah. So. Make sure your thoughts are your own. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes, exactly, yeah. And that's one of the things it was. You started thinking things that you wouldn't normally think about. 
started thinking neg more negatively and started getting angry at people for things that they might not have even done, but you were, you're getting paranoid and you were getting the thought that other people were saying things against you or doing things against you or uh, developing something against you. And so it became uh, a very low vibration thing that they did. And um, that was the longest attack of that nature so far. Wow. Yeah, I, I write emails a lot, and recently, like, I've become busy, so I write short emails and hi and bye, and, and that's about it. And no blessings, no nothing. And at one point, I, I came to the problem that somebody interpreted my email. He possibly read it in angry voice while I'm sending it lovingly, and it became a major problem. So now I am very careful. I say, dear somebody, a deer stands there, and then, how are you these days of the winter? And, uh, you know, thank you for that and that. Thank you for writing yes. or not writing. Then I tell them what I need to tell, and then I exit with the same, you know, grace, and every time I put a lot of effort, just, you know, that smile is in that email. Uh, and, you know, another thing about um, people is, like, you know, women, every cycle, you know, a few days before, before the menstruation, they become really, really nasty. They look at that and they want, want a conflict. They want, they want, uh, they want that, uh, you know, they look at everything negatively. And, no, go there, yeah. No, other way around, you treat them as psychiatric patients at these days. You say, oh, all right. Okay, check mark. Whatever they say, it, they, don't, they don't mean that. It's just, you know, the perce their perception is um, skewed or uh, distorted. So, I found that if you send them a Snickers bar, they're all fine. See, Jim got it. Jim's got it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, um, may, may, men have different cycles. Uh, all right. You want to do it to laugh? Yes. <laughs> well, it's true. I worked in a I worked in an environment of all women, and I was the only man. And I would come in after a while. All their cycles were together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I came in, and I would know exactly what day that was. I'd buy all everybody a Snickers bar, and they'd be all much happier. Yeah. And I had a wonderful day. So basically, it all comes to interpretation. If you know that they don't mean it, or they, don't, they would mean it next day, or in a few days from now, you just take it differently. And it's, it's all... It's sugar. It's sugar. Uh, I mean, sugar helps, yes, yes. But it's sweetness, it's... It has magnesium. There and plus go. the fact you're giving them something, it's, it's, a, it's, it's several different levels of, of gratification, so... Somebody thought of them. Yeah, somebody thought of them. It's sugar, it's chocolate, it's a gift, it's positive reinforcement. It's it's it makes the day much happier. But also there are many manically depressive males also and you also can calculate their sometimes they're obsessed with positive ideas, sometimes they're obsessed with control, sometimes they're paranoid about uh, paranoid about somebody taking advantage of them, but you really when you calculate and and Correct for that distortion. You you get get it better. Basically, it doesn't make sense to be offended at the snow or at uh, some natural phenomenon, right? So so same thing with humans. You know, if you calculate it right, if you dissect and analyze their behavior, then there is no point of being um, upset about their behavior because you kind of treat them as psychiatric patients, and you know, <laughs> and. Yeah, I mean Reiki. Do you know doing Reiki to people? Do you want to say something? No, no, I just was laughing because I was listening to what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah so, it's good. Next time. I know. So I treat a lot of people. I treat them as as kids, as kids which don't know what they're doing, <laughs> and uh, where they move. Uh, basically, it doesn't make sense to be upset. You know, at the, when they hit the wall, it doesn't make sense to be upset at the wall and curse it because it's, uh, you know, it is just. Uh, something out out of your control, so there is no sense to be upset at uh, people who bother you. And from here, I wanted to go to the idea again: depression and suicide. It's all about perception, analysis, and how you take things. Uh, how you take things, right? Um, no, not in the back. 
some days uh, the planets are just such. So if if it starts from uh, you know one person being negative and you see another person being negative, then um, then you just kind of calculate a trend and and take it more positively. That one moves back and forth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her back was hurting. I see. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, the, the book of Michael Newton is about uh, two books uh, about the soul's life after death. And, there is, uh, and uh, I recommend everybody to, to read that. Basically, you understand that you come here for experience and the depression is just part of the test. And if you take it as a part of the test, then the temptation to, take, uh, to, to, to exit before time is also a, a test. And, uh, and also, your mind is imperfect. You're fated... There is a fate, there is a pre-programmed uh, error in that. So that, that error, you cannot really get rid of that. I mean, that's my discovery. Few, many years ago, I had an a German uh, obsessive maniac depressive boss who was really mean to us. And he wanted everything, you know, he wanted to get everything straight. He wanted full, clear understanding of the reality. And no matter how hard he tried to get a real picture, what is underneath, what people are thinking, or who is plotting against him, uh, the more he tried to get it real, the, the more it became distorted in his mind. So it was amazing how he can get some things very real, very down to earth. He could know exact numbers, exact you know, what people said, but, but then, then the whole perception and analysis was complete distortion of the reality. So my conclusion from that was, no matter how, you, how hard you try to get the reality, a clear picture of the reality, it will be always distorted. You always have that error programmed in your uh, Earth experience. So don't even try, my conclusion, don't even try to be realistic and be down to Earth the way that, you know, you know everything. It's impossible. There is something in you that is programmed to be uh, like a dream, and things just slipped out of he your hand. And you know, no matter how you, hard you try not to make errors, there is something which will force you to make errors, and that's part of the test. I mean, that's you know, you can control random things, you can control fate, and you can control even your own mind. It will always be out of control. So you have to play, play with something which is not fully yours. Mm. Any comments on that? Suicide. Suicide is just one of those. You, well, I, can, I can tell you from experience that I used to think everybody thought like I thought, you know, and, and so I trusted everybody and I was, I was nice to everybody and I expected everybody to be the sort of the same kind of thought process, but I realized, you know, I, it took a long time for me to realize pe nobody thinks the same. <laughs> it's like I, I don't think like anybody else. And for them to understand me is for me uh, to say, hey, I don't think they're going to understand me. I, I just think totally different than them. Um, they're not going to be all uh, lovey and happy and all that. I, I see they don't even think the same. So that's a one reason to start thinking about suicide is that you don't even fit in where you thought you did and then you realize that nobody thinks like you. So, But I'm happy to be who I am. So, But I did go through a great struggle in my early years being who I was. So it was very hard. Hmm? I feel the exact same way. It's, it's really... It's... it's depressing to feel that way you know like yeah. I still feel the same way but like I, I'm not the way I was before but I'm glad I am the way I am because right. it makes me different from other people and like I can switch between my teenage life and go to the actual me you know mm -hmm. and I'm glad that I'm so young that I'm finding this out and I'm trying to find people my age who are aware too well, and you're going to be a leader so that's why you know first. So does that make sense to you? You're knowing first because you're going to be the beginning of it. Your light will come out and show others. You're, you'll, you'll gather others to yourself in some ways as you get a little older. Thank you. <laughs>
Well, you will. You will. Uh, thanks. This is Lakesh's. Lakesh's whole. I found that Lakesh seems to be talking to future light workers of the world. That's what he's doing. He's uh, attracting the future light workers of the world because that's his mission: is to train future light workers of the world. And so that's why you're attracted. <laughs> <laughs> If I was to become a leader, would that mean I would have physical encounters, like, with them? It's possible. I don't know that for sure, but I, I can tell you that it's an exciting world we're living in, and the future light workers are going to be amazing. I, I just know that. I'm an old. I, I can say something to that girl. I don't know her name, but uh, it's Kathleen. It's Kathleen, it's not about being a leader, but it's about how you show others what you do. It's about your your uh, experience, your uh, own example. When yeah. when you do this your own way, this is and you don't care about the others. This is this is the beginning. Just doing it, just having the the courage to stand up and do this and do that and just show them. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And the, your courage for coming online and talking is just part of that. So I see that. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I wanted to comment on that as well. So um, the uh, learned helplessness is a term in psychiatry. Learned helplessness, we all, like modern humans, we all have that. It's part of our more modern upbringing, learned helplessness. And when I speak to some people, uh, you know, some people, they kind of feel harmed, incapable of doing things. They feel like the fate is unfair to them. And they almost are trying, uh, they almost are crying. They almost are ready to start crying because they feel, oh, that happened, that bad thing happened to me. And another bad thing happened to me. And now I cannot do anything because my hands are tied. I am poor, sick, uh, unemployed. And there, are, there is beautiful life outside, but I'm not part of it. And I find, I know, when I look at the mirror, that's part of me. Uh, I, I'm poor. And you know, beautiful things happen out there. People drive wonderful cars, like you know, expensive cars, right here. Like, look at the window. Like next door, people having fun and they having friends and things, and and they travel. You know, how can people travel these days? They, it's it's very expensive to travel. So, <laughs> yes. So, did you see my car? <laughs> 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 so, and um, LinkedIn, uh, meetup.com and LinkedIn are, and Facebook are places where you just cross that border and uh, you start over. And I, I forced myself to start calling my old friends. It was hard, but, but uh, it was fun. And I started connecting to people, and I just build things from scratch. That's what you know. That, that's my approach. I come up with idea, I get excited, and build it from scratch. This website is built from scratch. I just wanted wanted it to create it. I, you know, you know, I I, I love to start things. You know, continuing su su sustaining them is is hard for me, but starting is great. So, so I'm starting every day. Now I'm starting like. Uh, I decided, okay, I go outside of Rochester, I search for a job around the globe, and and things happen. I had an interview in uh, London, had an interview in Silicon Valley through the through the telephone, and um, and I just started contacting LinkedIn to people in LinkedIn, and um, that's a great tool, and uh, things just started rolling. Now uh, I I come and offer, I can do that, I can do that, and. Uh, you know, that's all, all, all my life. Like, you know, I don't know how many, how often do you decide you will take a new path and take a new profession. I tried hundreds of profession, uh, professions, I guess. You know, one of the lowest points I was really, uh, it was back in Russia, I was a uh, grave digger. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, it wasn't exactly that. I, we didn't bury anyone, but I worked on the cemetery, you know, doing landscaping there. And we collected the bones there. It was one of the, you know, part of it was I was newly married and uh, I decided not to go official path. I kind of 
went off mainstream. So in Russia, it was very hard. You, you couldn't, uh, you know, you you were assigned to a job. You couldn't change a job. You know that was Soviet Union, and you had your passport and uh, the book, which is called employment book. It was in the control of the state. They assigned you to the job, like Lakesh is. Lakesh is also assigned to to work now on the belt. I was assigned to work. In the school, and actually, it was a great move. I think my guides were guiding you. You need to learn public speaking, and you know where else other than a teacher in the school you can learn public speaking, be with kids. So it was a great assignment, but I didn't get it. Uh, I didn't get. It. I wanted to do go my own path. So you know, the only choice was to you know to do this landscaping on the graveyard. Ah, oh, so starting new things and just you know from from any age, any place, starting over and uh, uh, just in, interpreting things differently. Like if that doesn't work, if somebody's uh, if luck doesn't smile to you, just say whatever and keep moving in another direction. It's like uh, like a billiard ball. Is it pool? Yeah, the pool, the 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 uh, the, the game with balls. It just uh, one ball knocks another and it keeps going. Basically, uh, say whatever. Bashar, you know Bashar. Bashar is our teacher, one of the greatest ones, my favorite. Uh, he was asked about depression. You know, what do we do with that depression? He says, his answer was, get over with it. <laughs> it's all about interpretation. You can interpret that things are bad and nothing can be done and Actually, now I don't look at the stars and the weather. I, you know, I go forward even in bad days. Even in most depressive days, I keep moving. <laughs> I don't set up interviews and and uh, job interviews and this kind of interviews when I can choose a sunny day. I would I would move to a sunny day. But even on the nastiest days, uh, things happen. And when you become desperate, you also can do things which you couldn't do when you weren't you want desperate. Like when you are desperate, you do things like that. And other people who are not desperate, they don't do things like uh, like Skype webinars. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> All right. How about channeling more? Are you ready? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to see if anybody comes. I would invite anybody to advise me and Jim on monetary issues and uh, give us advice where to move in search of jobs and income. That would be best. Lakesh was actually very helpful with that.
Ugh. <sighs> 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 